everyone. Welcome to another episode of Carbonite Bounty BS with the nerds here. Um, hope everybody's had a good week. Uh, I'm pretty sure all of us have. But uh, yeah, as we continue on, we're going to give you guys uh, part one, or I guess season one, part two of uh, yeah, the Clone Wars cartoon. And this will be uh, basically discussion of episodes seven through 12. But uh, before we get into any discussion points or things like that, uh, DP, why don't you tell uh, everyone how to find us and where to find us? Nerdsocyclopedia.com, people. Um, make sure that you are going to that site where you see all our links to your favorite social media outlets at Nerdcyclopedia on Instagram, Facebook, and also on um, Twitter. Um, make sure that if you're watching us on YouTube right now, you're clicking on that link so you can get notifications. So anytime that we're on, you that you know that we're on. Make sure that you are um, subscribing to us at our fav- at your favorite podcast outlets, iHeartRadio, Spotify. Um, I, uh, Google Play, wherever you, that you listen to your favorite podcast, we are there. And also make sure that you are giving us that good feedback. Remember, we have our Carbonite Bounty BS um, podcast um, uh, forum right on Facebook, you know, group. Uh, you could actually comment there and join us. Of course, bring your friends. We love your friends. And, you know, anybody else who, you know, wants to talk some Star Wars with us, bring them on there so we they could get some, so they could, we could give them some feedback and they could give us some feedback too. Um, and also um, email us, nerds at nerdcyclopedia.com. Appreciate that, DP. And uh, as we get things started here, guys, just some couple light news topics. And it's really just uh, things bouncing around as far as the stratosphere. Um, there is some talk that uh, Dave Filoni and John Favreau have not been too uh, involved in some of the other projects, which is uh, pretty nice. I mean, Obviously, they'll oversee them, but they're letting these other storytellers, as we're getting these episodes, get their point across. But as I feel, I mean, they're not going to approve it moving forward if there aren't, um, you know, substantial, you know, things they want to see in Star Wars. And as long as it continues. So I guess that's one of the big points is we're seeing these Obi-Wan series and things like pop up that uh, the Favreau and Filoni um, kind of hand in, you know, and everything like George isn't as... um, you know, as much as I thought it'd be, I thought they'd be involved in every project, but it's nice that they're letting these other people um, be involved, tell their story. But like I said, hopefully these stories that we're, we're getting um, will kind of follow in the same Mandalorian type theme. Well, uh, the way I feel about, um, I mean, it's not George that's, he's a godfather of everything, but he's not involved in anything right now. Um Filoni and Favreau, they they have their certain sets with the Soka thing that's coming out, the um the Rose Squadron, I believe, and also of course the Mandalorian and also the Boba Fett show. Um, I mean they got their set in section. Um, right. yeah, let the other, you know, it's, it's Star Wars is a big playpen, so it's uh, it's a good sandbox that you you can play in and um you know let other other creators do their do, just as long as you're not straying too far outside of the um. Right. Um, or contradicting, I should say, any of the lore, then I, I think it's okay. Yeah, I think Carl Weathers actually has a show in development as well, which is that would be pretty cool because you know yes. I know they choking him a couple give, episodes. Give in, me so, more yeah. grief. Yes. Yeah. That Not character, literal, we'll have, but you know, he's yeah. like grief has some stuff. Grief is awesome. He's like if Han Solo went somewhat legit, not all the way legit. You know what I mean? Like that's what where he would have ended right. up running that cantina. So I love I love grief, Carga. I love Carl Weathers. You know, a wise man once said. Anytime you can have a Wookiee and a Mandalorian in the same universe, that's a universe right there. <laughs> and... What is it with the Wookiees? I don't know. Uh... You're like Wookiee, a Wookiee fetish. Something. Like, you, like, you like hair? What? So, so before we came on, we were talking about uh, we were talking about Wookiees for some reason. We were doing our Wookiee impression. So I'm going to do mine. We might as well take a turn here. This is, you know, light news week. I'm just going to do one Wookiee impression. Okay, that's that's mine. Anyone else want to do one just to get it out of the system? <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> that means you pass. That's okay, the Wookiee guard. That's, that's like that's, that's close the, enough. That's the Wookiee pass. Okay, that's yeah, close that enough. That pass. Right. That Wookiee impersonation pass. Man, hey, that was a piss poor. I mean, you know, I, that that that, that Wookiee has no game. Whoever made that sound, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so the great thing about having this broad universe and there's so much Star Wars coming out is, you know, the reason there were so many like there was so much focus on these prequel series <coughs> and, and this older media is because it took three years to get more Star Wars. 
you know, the Clone Wars is this first instance where there ever really was this much content coming out on a regular basis. And it's something that reminds you that what's going to happen now is that it's not like we're not going to get anything, you know, from the core series, but we're going to get so much more. And if you expand the horizons of the universe, I mean, there's only so much work two people can do. So you're naturally going to reach a handoff point. And I think they've done enough to foster the TV universe where this is not just acceptable. It's desirable to see more flavors. So I'm excited about it. Yeah. I think they've opened up a, and they've got enough good talent working on it now that they can do, I mean, they can do whatever they want. I mean, and, and make it good as long as they keep the, keep the, uh, the format the same, right? What they've come, what, what, that Mandalorian has started. And as long as you keep doing that, it's all good. Yeah, true. I, I believe that as well. I'm actually excited for the Andor series, even though we know his end. I mean, stories like that. Super Bowl and... thing on that? Super Bowl spot? Um, yeah, no, there's a spot. I, could, I, haven't, I haven't found anything yet. It, that usually leaks out tomorrow. But uh, there is, you know, some Star Wars, allegedly, there's some stuff they're going to show during uh, the Super Bowl or if there's a time slot. I mean, Disney usually buys up a bunch of stuff, so um, I know there's a spot for that. I think we'll get, like, the ninth Black Widow trailer. I don't know why they just won't release it. It's been done, but, Please, yeah. finally. It's there, you know. It's right. also, like, sort of a prequel, too. I mean, this is a Star Wars podcast. That's not... Yeah. <laughs> it's not veered too right. far off. The, the yeah, we won't veer universe. off of that, but, yeah. So, but, um, yeah, there there should be a spot there for the Andor stuff. I believe that's the outside of Solo, which is... um. In screening now, I believe. I'm pretty sure they're screening that now. We're starting to shoot uh, early stuff. So, yeah, that's really the next um, next projects coming out. So And I know they have footage they've been hiding from us based on some of that investor stuff. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's really our, our new segment for the week, guys. Um, I guess moving into the episode here and going over uh, part two of season one, which are 7 through 12. Um, we'll start with you, DP. What were your first impressions of these uh, this, this next uh five uh, or six episodes of the um, Clone Wars. I liked them. Um, you know, um, me and um, Hitch was texting back and forth. You know, when you get Jar Jar in some of these, some of these scenarios and stuff, it, it's a big turnoff. So uh, <laughs> um, good thing he wasn't in a bunch of them. But I did notice um, in one of, the, one of the later episodes, I believe it was like either 10 or 11, it was, seemed like it was a different voice doing him yes. because he wasn't as annoying yeah. i noticed you know? that too um so i was appreciative of that and you know he didn't have that much you know um input or whatever but he did they did the um the the the, the clones did put him up as a um as a, a decoy <laughs> or whatever <laughs> <laughs> and that was that was something bad to have to him, didn't you? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i know you're sick it's like yeah <laughs> oh man um, it was interesting seeing like um, Grievous, you know, his whole lair and everything. That was pretty dark. Um, we got to see the introduction of a, a new a Jedi that I've never seen before. So that was, you know, exciting. They like, what Kit, uh, Kit Fisto. Fisto. Kit or Fisto. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Him and his former Padawan, um, Nadar or whatever, who mm. was a uh, Texan hitch. You know, he's hard headed. You know, so. He just kept not doing, you know, what everything that his um, old master said, and ended up getting losing his life over that, you know. Which in Star Wars thing, uh, I'm sitting up here watching this 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 show. I'm like, okay, they were getting pretty. Um, it's it's pretty lethal in this universe, you know, with the killing and stuff that's going on. Um, so yeah, I was I was liking some of the episodes. Uh, I, I liked the whole um, Dooku, Anakin, and um, um. Obi Wan, you know, being um, in the prison together and them having to work together to escape, so that was that was pretty decent. And I liked the whole pirate gang episode, so I, you know, I thought that was that was pretty decent. What about you, Hitch? My my favorite thing that happened was that we got an R two D two nude scene, and that was what <laughs> I'd been waiting for for literally forever. So they take R two D two apart, and they're like, "This is what you looked like inside," and it's just a bunch of like cans wow. or whatever. So oh, funny. Okay. Uh, that's what I was thinking the whole time. And then, of course, you know, we were watching, I'm watching episode eight, and I, and I started doing this, you know, pretty soon after we found it. was like Monday. And I just, like, had this terrible, terrible feeling that it was going to be all about Jar Jar Binks. And it was, you know, and he made a friend with a caterpillar, <laughs> and Padme was in it too. And so Jar Jar is like this, this mendacious House of Representatives character who just does Palpatine's bidding because he's from his home planet. 
and he's like whole, a wholly owned subsidiary politically of of Palpatine. So it's like it's kind of interesting to see that. Um, as far as like you know the, the episodes I actually liked, I did enjoy a lot of uh, the space battle stuff, especially the Grievous stuff. Seeing a little bit more into the origins of Grievous is interesting because he's so you know. Seeing this in in um, chronological order as it exists now is so interesting because this is all like um, you know Grievous is in episode three, so this is all color for that that was missing the first time I saw that, and so it's so interesting to see that. And you know, coming back to General Binks uh, in in uh, episode twelve, <laughs> I just kept thinking to myself like like the clones are like oh we're oh we're we're in some trouble uh, representative we better put on your seatbelt and then they do and the other thing the other senator dies and i'm like why couldn't it be jar jar it should have been you <laughs> so you know and jar jar gets all these clones killed and gets that guy killed like you like he's he's got a trail of bodies that he's, he's stacking reckless. up here you know what i mean reckless and just like we talked about last week I, you know, these clones are real to me now because I've seen their, like, I believe they all have this interior monologue, this rich, this rich depth of their character. So losing these pilots to Jar Jar's idiocy hurts. <laughs> it hurts. And I just, and I just don't want to see him anymore. <laughs> That's all I have to say about Jar Jar. <laughs> How do you follow that up, Ken? Well, you know what? I just got an email from the Gungan Union, and uh, <laughs> they they have a few points they want to take up with you, Hitch. And uh, it's of a private uh, matter, so they want a meeting maybe through uh, Teams uh, later on tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm watching these. I'm watching this whole Clone Wars uh, thing, and I know what they're doing. And here's what they're doing for me. One ma- big thing is they're introducing me to Jedi Knights who I saw mercilessly die in Revenge of the Sith that I had no idea who these people were. I mean, I'm just I'm just being what? completely honest. Okay. I had no idea who Kit Fisto was, yeah. no idea who uh, uh, Unduli Luminari was, no idea who these people were, but in, and I'm, I'm sure we're going to see um, Alea Sukul, the, the blue Twi'lek. Yeah. Sure we're going to she got blindsided in Revenge of the Sith. I mean, that was legit. Like, who the heck is this person and why? So anyway, Clone Wars has given me background. So now I get to know who Kit Fisto was and Plow Koon, too. Because there are these yeah, Jedi Knights yeah. that in the movies, you just see them get wiped out. You have no idea what their backstory was, who they were. Did they have Padawans? Did they have family? What was their deal? What was their story? So Clone Wars, I think, is filling in these spaces for me. Mm. With a very entertaining story, naked jar- naked R2D2, of course. I didn't even <laughs> think about that. R2D2 torn apart in pieces like C3PO. So that was nice to see R2 blown up. Finally, uh, and Grievous, I would really like to see <clears throat> where he came from because he's like he's like a cross between Pinhead and. Uh, <laughs> kind of another dark element, you know, like a dark fighter, like Blade. Like if you took Blade and made him evil like Pinhead and then put armor on him, you know, he's just got this, he's just some weird about him. He's like, he's like a, a big blunt knife or machete slicing up Play-Doh. I mean, this guy has absolutely no, no, uh, there's no romance in his anger and his violence. He's just, pfft, he just doesn't care. And what Hitch mentioned last time, he just like he blows shit up. Oh, sorry, he blows stuff up and gets in the ship and flies away. Like, and he gets to another ship, blows that. That gets blown up. He gets in his ship, flies somewhere else. He's great. So I like to see more of Grievous. But I like being introduced to all these Jedi that basically I didn't know who they were from a hole in the ground. And so, uh, so they were all in um, um, Sith, huh? They were all in Revenge of the Sith, and they all died. Oh, I've seen quickly. Yeah. Those are, those are all... the ones they. He chose those specifically for this. Um, yeah, for that's that reason. Right. Well, Fisto is right. so you, uh, he's in You see two them well. a little bit and then wow. kind of puts it all together. So that's that's my take on it. And there's no, was there a Wookiee? I don't think it was a Wookiee. <laughs> no. Not yet. Uh, maybe that's, well, yeah, maybe that's but, where uh, all that comes from. We are missing a Wookiee this week. And that's, uh-huh. we're just all Wookiee, Wookiee uh, thirsty. It's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> 
I think there's a Wookiee Jedi, but I, that might be in the uh, whatever the High Republic. There's Lobaka. Lobaka, Chewbacca's nephew, is a Jedi in the Legend series. <laughs> the Legend series, which once again, I just want to make sure everybody knows that this episode, like every other episode of Carbon Eye Bounty BS, is brought to you by the Chewbacca Memorial Association. <laughs> because everybody cried when the furball died. <laughs> on Zerempital. So everybody remember that. Do not forget it. Hey, right. Hitch, Hitch, do you have this? Do you have the uh I think it's Saturday Night Live. Is it Saturday Night Live where it's <laughs> ten years later after a new hope and Princess Leia Carrie Fisher actually puts a medal around Chewbacca's neck? <laughs> yeah, I seen that. <laughs> you, you know Chewbacca. what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Were you one of the people that petitioned for that? <laughs> no. That happened in 1987. I was four, man. Like I, I, I definitely wasn't writing letters. I mean, I know, I know, I seem like that kid, right? Listen to me. Yeah, you do. Listen to me, George Lucas. You're gonna put a medal on Chewbacca. You're gonna pay. You're gonna pay dearly. They they sensed the midichlorians in you when you were like four years old. So you know. <laughs> Yeah, you know, the internet puts on like 15 years. So I don't right. know. I don't, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know. You could be you could be 80. Uh, what's up, what's up with this dynamic between Dooku and um Grievous? Because uh, Grievous yeah. seemed to be pretty irritated by a lot of things that Dooku was trying to do as far as pulling his strings. And Dooku is just like, you know what? I mean, I got this, you know, under control here. So you you're, you know. It, what's what's up with that? I mean, um, Trent. <laughs> I mean, as far as my take on it, I, when I figured it, I, I just—it's like a—it's uh, an interesting dynamic because you have obviously your Force users, whether it be Jedi or Sith, and then you have these, I guess, elementals, you know, cyborgs that you know, like for all intents and all intents and purposes, you know, he has lightsabers from Jedi. He's killed somehow, which I'll never understand, but. You know, he's collected jet, uh, lightsabers, and I just think it's a power struggle based on, you know, this whole mecha versus, you know, I don't know, human slash whatever we consider him, alien element. It, it s sort of bothers him. I think it's a power struggle. Is As Hitch said, Gr Grievous is one of those characters that uh, doesn't like to be inferior in any, you know, facet of life, and I feel that he feels legitimate Sith are a threat to him. And I, to be honest, I don't even know if um, any force abilities work on him other than maybe a push. I don't obviously with him being semi-human. I don't know if he has uh, like you know uh, any mental capacity as far as mind tricks or things like that. But I think it's always been an issue to him would be as far as feeling feeling inferior to any species or anything that is kind of the cause for him. Yeah, and Dooku has a plan, right? Dooku yeah. has a plan, and it's all he wants it to be. He's very organized. Like, he's got OCD out the wazoo. But once things start to go a little sideways, he gets, he get he has to reel stuff in. Grievous is a, he's a, he's a ticking time bomb. You don't know what, what he's going to do next. So he's disorganized. So he, Dooku needs him because he's muscle. But then yeah. he also needs to be able to put a hand, a hand on him to control him. And that's like you said, uh, T. Mitch, that's, you're not going to control Grievous. And Grievous certainly don't want to be controlled by no old man. You know, <laughs> that, he's not going to. He's not going to do it. He wants his own thing, and uh, and he's real vulnerable too, right? Yeah. We saw that. He, An his, old man he, with a crooked lightsaber. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I'm still. Not, I'm still not sold on that. I just that's just one of those designs. I. I, I whatever. You he's know. holding it at an angle like that matters. Like I mean, the human yeah. is like you know does all this. Whatever. You know, Grievous is interesting because it, it seems like he has, like you're saying, this inferiority complex. And, and he tells his droid pointedly, improvements, right? He goes, aha, this isn't just alterations. These have a purpose. Yeah. He's basically turning himself into the greatest physical warrior that he can be. And I think sometimes what he is, as he's this illustration that this is what the force actually brings to the table for these warriors is something that's way beyond anything Grievous can even access. And so he is like, what he is, is he's this commander who's looking for the ultimate challenge. And so he wants to turn himself into the ultimate weapon. And so that's what he's trying to do is he's trying to wield this droid army, which has no, you know, no ability to strategize, no ability to think. 
And he's using it as a weapon and wielding it against the Republic. And and that vis-a-vis the Jedi, he can never become what Dooku is. He can never learn how to, you know, how to how to see so far ahead like the Jedi do. You know, I, I play chess sometimes when I'm bored. And if you ever play a computer set at like the highest level, it's impossible to win. You can never ever beat these things because they're so advanced. And the thing a Jedi gets is the ability to see the next three moves you're gonna make. And that's the mm-hmm. thing about about using the force that's sort of like a passive thing that prevents Grievous, no matter how many alterations Grievous goes through, Grievous will never be able to catch up to Obi-Wan, never be able to catch up to Anakin, and never be able to catch up to Dooku. They just will always outclass him because of the Force. Mm-hmm. But he, he he wields the weapon very well. Oh, yes. He's modified himself to to handle four at a time. Woo, man, that's and- deep. Yeah, special oh. modifications in the wrists. I mean, that's 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 stuff that the Jedi look at and they're like, uh-uh. We <laughs> well, 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 Kit, for that. you know, when 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 that that was a cool battle too, with him and um, Fisto and everything was battling, and yep. you know he had the four the four lightsabers and stuff, and and Kit was still like you know hanging with him and everything. Um, that was a that was a real decent battle there, and the way he moved his wrists and like the the alterations that 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 uh, made him more formidable, um, I thought was pretty decent. You know, Grievous, you know, he held his. I mean, Kid held his own against him though, so that was a that was a pretty decent battle for me. Yeah, it was legit. Yeah, the get, interesting even... thing, the interesting thing with Grievous is that he also with all each arm fights with a different lightsaber style, so. The unique thing about him is he literally fights with four different lightsaber styles. So it's basically like fighting four Jedi in one. Even though in some sequences they move in unison, he actually has the ability to fight with four different styles. So a different lightsaber oh. style from each arm. Does That's he have a crazy. first name? General. General. <laughs> really? General? Well, look, 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 at, look at you talking. Look at your first name on the screen, boss. Yeah. <laughs> hey, the shoe fits. Okay, his first name's General. <laughs> General G. Grievous. G. Grievous. General General. What? No, it's a rank. It's also his name. You know. Uh, his his name is actually uh, Kwai Mal Jai Shilel. Shilel. Is he from, oh, yeah. from Krypton? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this was originally uh, Kali that's too, from the planet that's, Kali. That's about two galaxies away there, Ken. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, we said it was a big universe already, but it ain't that big. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> say, say that again. Uh, his <laughs> name is Kwaimal Jai Shalal. All right. Right? He's sure. from the planet Kalish. Uh, or he actually, Grievous was originally a Kalish from the planet Kali. So I guess his race of person... <laughs> Or uh, species of people were still kind of cybernetic looking. Looking at some images of him, so. And then they saw yeah. a blender, or like a food processor from Black and Decker, and he was like, "I must do this. This will be the, the strategy that will kill the Jedi." Right. But he has COPD too. So. <laughs> yeah. <right. laughs> I never should have smoked so much when I was when I was in school. <laughs> He's got that really bad cough too. He's like. He's got that really bad cough, you know? And he's just like Eisenhower in a different, you know. He's just smoking the camels. Like, he's just flying around in that ship, like, just smoking a cigarette. He's like, oh, they blew up a ship again. Ooh. He's just like, yeah, that's what's going on. I thought it was kind of weird that Dooku got himself caught, you know? I mean, he seems like the type that, you know, that you wouldn't really, he wouldn't really get himself in that position to get caught by pirates and stuff. You don't but, think that was a setup? Yeah, I, I thought that was a setup. Yeah. I mean, Palpatine did the same thing, right? Or, you know, Senator Palpatine got himself trapped. Of course, that was a setup, too. He got trapped by Grievous, right? (laughs) Well, that was his... That was... I mean, we'll get to that in Episode 3. After after what happened in January, I'm like... I am excited to hit that plot point because it will be interesting to see what we think about that now from 2021, man. That'll be wild. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Um... What do we think about the um, pirates and stuff? That's an interesting group, man. There's like some, yeah. there's some actual like real, like potential for good stories and, and interesting characters. I love the pirate captain. 
He's so like, yeah. you know, he's got he's the right amount of pragmatic. <laughs> Is that the way to put it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that whole that the the that whole scenario was um it was decent to see and then at the end, you know, when um you know, they Obi-Wan just kept telling him, I mean, there's no reason for me to stay here, you know, or for us to stay here. We need to just go. So, you know, we're we're just going to go and um the pirates just like, "Okay." You know, um and, and they were going against the. I mean, at the at one point they were about to. He was about to kill him, you know, mm. with them being you know caught up in everything. And then at the end there, um, they sort of left on amicable terms, or left each other on amicable terms. I thought it was like a um, like you know, like Hitch was saying, it's it's a decent um, you know, setup for them to be involved in some other things. I guess you know later down the line, I don't know if we're going to see them again, but there's definitely some good you know story you know potential with them. Yeah, you know, the interesting part about when you watch this series as well is it kind of ties all, even some of the novels that people have written. So when you see some of these expanded universe novels, such as like, um, you know, Legends of Luke Skywalker, which is a book leading up to episode seven, um, it, once again, you know, uh, Filoni, Favreau, everybody on board at, uh, you know, Lucasfilm, LucasArts, uh, just do a great job of, you know, these episodes aren't the longest, but in some cases, even the Jar Jar content, it's annoying, but they kind of know when to cut it. You know, there's not too much to where, like, you know, when we discussed episode one, it just became so redundant. So I, I do appreciate the fact that they kind of, you know, it's kind of in and out, like we say, you know, outside of the annoying uh, intro, you know, guy, which I know Ken wishes we would cut, you know, I mean, that, that yeah, guy, he, yeah, he needs to go. He, yeah. uh, if if it was because he sets the tone for the episode, and he sets the tone for the Clone Wars movie too, which sort of like you know put me yeah. off a little bit. And you take him out, I mean, I think it it it's a much better. Are, are we getting him every episode? Um, every, every episode. Yeah. And, see, okay. yeah, I the intro. Actually, Jar Jar. Jar Jar. Got <laughs> no, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, no. I thought it was a Wookiee. No. If, if, no. If they replaced it with no. a Wookiee, it would be better. No. <laughs> yeah, it might be play. It might be better if it was a Wookiee. Just like like the subtitles every single time, you'd be like, "This is this rules. It's the best thing ever." I don't know. So for me, it's interesting because like I know I think there's like some context to what these things are supposed to be. It's supposed to be like news newsreels, right? Like World War II newsreels where they would come mm -hmm. in and go, "American troops have entered France. The, the landing at Normandy." Like they come in and do that and show you the the thing. So. I, I think I understand that's what they're going for. And that's interesting because I can appreciate that perspective because I, I, I didn't think about that. So you're you're kind of right on that end. It's neat that it's a little different from the serials, <laughs> like the episodes of the serials we get, that this is more like a newsreel. It's more like a um, like a almost like a documentary is what it's kind of being presented as. Right. And it's so much like if you look at the actual length of the content, like like I know that Tom's been in our chat. Thomas has been in our chat saying. We're in for the long haul. We are in for the long haul, in fact. And it is pretty long. You figure the movies are two and a half hours apiece. We're doing these in hunks about the same size, and there's going to be you know, a lot of these that we're going to have to go through to get through the Clone Wars. So this is like, interestingly enough, when you start episode four at the very beginning, it's looking back at this event, and it is the, the hunk, the biggest meat hunk of the Star Wars universe right now is this. So it all makes sense thematically, which, which I appreciate. So that's pretty cool. And what uh, T. Mitch was saying, you know, uh, Filoni and them, them guys, they know how to when to introduce a character surgically, like Jar Jar, in a certain point to push the plot along, and then when to take it out. So yeah, they're very deliberate about this. They're very deliberate about the action scenes and the fighting and the dialogue between Obi Wan and Anakin. They're very specific about these things. I get the feeling that they went through these these cartoons with with uh, a lot of detail to the storyboard to make sure that everything that was said and and done made sense and was very it was very, just very very deliberate about the whole thing so yeah, i think i mean i I'll, I'll, I'll watch them all i'll watch them all yeah because it has to make sense because we got you know after all this we got episode three so it had it has to make sense and like you know hitch was saying they dedicated a large chunk between two episodes two and three to this so mm -hmm. this is a major thing in the star wars mythos you know as far as the clone wars which is pretty interesting 
Um, it would be really interesting if they do something else later down the line to fill in those gaps between, like, episodes um, six and seven. You know, yeah. you know, um, I don't know what they could do, but like, it's like, you know, he was saying this is a large chunk. This is a large chunk, you know, to to um, to pad everything between episodes two and three. Wasn't there a, there was a trade uh, paperback or at least a series job of the hut, wasn't there? That sort of did that filled in between Empire and in Jedi. Well, you kind of knew what was. What was going on there? Shadows of the Empire does that. It goes in, and it's that um, that was the trade you're thinking of that was a game on N64 that totally yeah. ruled. Yeah, <laughs> that ruled. Rendar was the uh, was the hero. Yeah, that game that game rocks. So yeah, you think that kind of did fill in a little bit, but it didn't get too much with uh, to Tatooine, did it? I mean, I don't. Um, I, don't... I mean, they ran down that they they were they were looking for job for Han. I know there was like a there's a swoop biker level. But you know it's, it, it's 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 definitely ripe, right? Like all this stuff that happens at, after episode six stops. It's like there's this momentum where, you know, the story's moving moving forward. We never see what happens, and then episode seven sort of lands, and it sort of lands so far away from where episode six stopped that it might as well be its own new, whole new thing. And I think what we're finding now is we sort of look into the Clone Wars. Like this is all new content for me, but I'm feeling that it's sort of weaving this tapestry of Star Wars together really tight. Where now things that had an end point that I could see, well, now I can see that whole thread coming into view. You know what I mean? So now, like, right. seeing, you know, Kid Fisto push over a clone a clone trooper in Episode 2 and then have all the plot that we will now see him do, I'm assuming. You introduce a character in Season 1, it goes seven seasons, I assume he comes back. My thing. And then we see what happens to him at, in Episode 3. And so this is, like... It's building that bridge in between the two, and it's filling in a why. It's filling in more of the why. Like, why should we be so concerned that this is happening to these Jedi? Like, why should we have this investment? And so it's excellent from that perspective, and that it's filling in those gaps that I honestly felt when I watched this in, in 2005 that these gaps existed. And who are these characters, and why should I? This feels like a moment that probably should be hitting me even harder than it is. And I have this, I mean, obviously. Order sixty six is going to be painful for us this time. <laughs> it's going to yeah hurt. Um, I'm, I'm I'm thinking no, if, if yeah if you if General Ken and you Hitch are saying that you know these characters are going to meet some sort of crazy fate in Episode three, me getting invested is going to be a really great thing because I've seen I've seen none of this and you guys haven't really seen it either. But I don't remember a whole lot from Revenge of the Sith. So it's surprising hearing all these characters that you say are are in there that you really were like red shirts in that movie, I guess. Yeah. And they have no type of um, you know, history or whatever that we're see, that that we're getting invested now. So it's a it's a good thing. It's a good thing. I mean, yeah. Wait, wait do you see it? Yeah, you'll you'll be like, oh yeah, oh man, he died. He, he went he went down like that. That was merciless. You know, you'll see. <laughs> I mean, think you'll, about Jedi, the... when Jedi forgot the. To stop blaster fire all of a sudden. Oh, well, That's whatever. another story. Well, a whole That's bunch, a whole bunch of that. blasters, and they didn't. You know, it's a betrayal. Betrayal. You can never listen. If you stab someone in the back, you can never defend against a stab in the back. Uh, you right. just, you just gotta let it roll. But think about all this, like, all this, this sort of backstory that doesn't have to be explained in episode three and isn't. And all of a sudden, we have that. As soon as we see these characters, we don't need to be told this is this person. They're doing this. We're gonna know exactly who they are. Exactly who they roll with. And look, my, I mean, I would bet these troopers that are talking to Palpatine in this movie that have the paint, I mean, we're meeting them now, right? I mean, we meet Commander mm -hmm. Cody already. So, like, that tension that, in my opinion, seemed a little manufactured when I saw it, this the first time around is going to feel a lot more legitimate because it has this whole entire series to sort of bake in the oven. And when, when we get there at the end, it'll be ready. Okay. Yeah. Hey, that's 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 what a good that's what a good series is supposed to do, you know. So yeah, definitely can't wait. Yeah, um, and one of, one of the final points as far as these episodes we've noticed as well is like I said, you know, my biggest thing with Star Wars is obviously Sith lore. I've always wanted more of it. So you see that uh, this is kind of Dooku, I guess, as uh, Darth Tyrannus is his, his uh, Sith name. At him at his peak because he has obviously Asajj, which is his. Um, you know, I guess not Padawan, but his uh, Sith Apprentice. So, 
you know, at this point, this is as we're getting in episode three, and he's a lot older and weaker. The thing with the Sith and even Palpatine being, a, a, you know, a lord or a, a master is you notice their bodies break down a lot faster than Jedi because they're built, they're fueled by rage. So as that rage starts to decline, you know, that energy starts to decline, they're so expandable. So it's kind of cool as we're saying we see him at his height here. And as, you know, we, we see him at episode three, kind of at the demise or at the end of his power, it's kind of cool that, that, you know, for the hardcores out there who didn't know Asajj was, you're, as you're saying, we're filling these stories, we're getting lore, we're getting characters that, you know, outside of the people who've just watched movies, what I'd never had any idea of. So I can appreciate what they're doing as far as each character developing them and even giving backstory. So when you do watch these movies now, it kind of makes them a little more, you know, palpable, I guess is the word. Yeah, that's all. I, I agree. Yeah, that's what I was saying. That that this is gonna, and I'm I'm a, I'm guessing. So we what you got? We have what seven seven seasons of these. We're only like what a hundred episodes left. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not like they're gonna start repeating stuff. You know, I mean, we're we got like more. Yeah, so, so, uh, you know, I think story. Well, the crazy thing is, like, all those awesome characters that we were going to meet in The Mandalorian that we know are from this series right. still are yeah. in the future. So it's yeah. like, yeah. you know, we, That's exciting thing. we've only met Ahsoka so far. Like, there's all these, you know, we're going to meet all the Mandalorians and all that cool stuff. And so there's a lot more meat to really look forward to in this series. And I'm excited that it's already sort of giving me additional depth and appreciation for the movies I already saw and liked. And that's something I really wasn't expecting when we started doing this, like, uh, Clone Wars watch. So I'm really glad we did, because now I feel like my appreciation for Episode 3 is going to be a lot better than it would have been if I'd never seen it. Right. Kind of like Ken's saying, too. I think what Filoni and they did at this point is this is kind of where, like, uh, even, like, somebody neutral like DP has said, this is where Star Wars at this point in life was extremely toxic. Um, it was the hardcores who know everything, who know everything about the movies, know everything about the characters, and there were casual people who were trying to get into it. So what this series done, as we see, is they're developing these characters to where a neutral can come in, you can now learn about these characters, and as you say, when we see episode three, oh, that's that Jedi, oh, that's that person who died, had no idea who it is. So it kind of makes it Star Wars, and this is pre-Disney, it made it a path to where not you didn't have to be a Star Wars hardcore to watch Star Wars. It was just a, they were making movies and they're telling stories that anybody can relate to. So that's that's my appreciation getting out of it, watching it now is just what they really were trying to do as far as breaking down barriers. Because like I said, I remember at this time, if you were a Star Wars fan, you were a hardcore. If you weren't a hardcore, you didn't matter as far as in the Star Wars community. So they did a really good job with this kind of breaking up, you know. Yeah, the barriers. yeah, I mean, you you can um, and you don't have to watch this. You don't have to watch this to you know to still enjoy like the movies and everything. But you know, seeing a series and you know things are developing with the characters, you're missing out. You know, on um a lot of the stuff like you know just to keep going back to all these red shirts that were dying in like you know uh, revenge. Um, you're getting a lot more depth with them. So if you're into characters. You know, instead of actual stories and everything, this is a great watch for you. You know, um, you know, filling in those gaps and everything, especially if you got time to watch it. You know, I mean, it's a lot of stuff on, and the the the, the episodes are only 22, 21, 22 minutes. They're easy watches. You're in and out. You know, bam, I can put on a um, Clone Wars episode. You know, and then do my um, chores and stuff afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> and the most important thing that you said, uh, DP, is that if you don't watch it, you're missing out. You're missing out on some great content. And some if you already like Star Wars, this is perfect. And I didn't see that back when these came out. I missed that. Uh, that that narrator bugged me a little bit. I, uh, so, go ahead. I think I think a lot of it was put off. So the narrator, the fact that it was an animated cartoon, the, the fact that the animation, when I first seen it, just put me off. I'm like, oh, no, this is... I, I'd rather keep my stuff live and everything, and I'm casual, so to see something like this in sort of computer-animated form was not for me, so I, I wasn't even watching it. But they have, you know, now coming back to doing this with you guys, watching The Mandalorian, getting into it more, and wanting to know more about the universe, and knowing that the universe has such a big vast, it's such a big vast of, you know, good stories to tell, just stories to tell, period, makes me want to um, 
like I said, I was, I was thinking this was all about the Skywalkers. Star Wars is not all about the Skywalker. It's the Skywalker is the main, you know, main thing, but it's more than that. And we're only seeing we have the episodes of Clone Wars that don't even feature that they, they barely feature like Anakin. You know, we're getting like, you know, um whole episodes with like Fisto and um, you know, um Nadar and everything and um um Grievous and stuff. And I got I mean, it's a really great appreciation if you love Star Wars. Yep. And as far as this, guys, before we wrap it up, is there any questions of the week we have for uh, anything we've got from uh, any of our online viewers or, uh, you know, anybody over the social platforms this week? Well, before we, we talk about what we want to do this week, I want to first say a humongous thank you to everybody who has been on our forum on Carbonite Bounty BS on Facebook. The answers we got to this question uh, about Gina Carano were so uh, were so yeah, deep fired up. and so passionate that, you know, I just wanted to say thank you to everybody who decided to contribute. And, and we really, like, really, really appreciated the discussion. I want to say that the discussion stayed, first of all, uh, very cordial. And that's something that we want to keep on our message board. So thank you to everybody for sort of maintaining decorum even when we disagree about certain things. So thank you to everybody for that. Um, I, I am... I'm just very glad that we got the contributions we got this from uh, from our group this week, and I'm real excited to see you know how this community grows, and I hope that you know you guys that are on the message board are, you know, considering coming with us on this sort of I don't know you want to call it like a book club rewatch of the Clone Wars if you haven't seen it before. Uh, I think it's really great, and I want to also say this because it's something I haven't said in a while, and uh, some of you might remember me that I say this sometimes. But look, we have these apps. I know DP tells you about them at the beginning of the show. On those apps, you can give us a rating. And it is very important, even if you listen to us on Facebook or YouTube or whatever, go there and give us a five-star rating. Because, look, I I don't want to have to do it. But if you don't, <laughs> I will give you the business. That's what That's he does, people. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so thank That's you again does. to our community for really showing up and, um, you know, having a real honest discussion. That, that's what really makes it fun to have uh, to have those discussion boards. So thank you again to everybody. No, it was definitely, a, like I said, especially in these times, definitely a good uh, topic to uh, kind of tackle. I mean, it was, you know, a valid point now. So uh, any of you guys have any suggestions as far as a big topic for this week or anything we want to throw up at, out, out there to any of our uh, fans or viewers? Um, what you got? What you got, T. Mitch? I mean, you're the you're Mister Question. I mean, I guess the question I guess we can go this week would you know obviously we're thinking about you know obviously it's a Super Bowl weekend here so you know hopefully we're getting a, a slot in there or something so I guess we can get out there to the guys and all, all, all the listeners and guys and gals and you know boys and girls uh, what I mean and we kind of talked about it briefly when we went over um, what's coming from the IP. Uh, what is everybody really, really, really excited about? I mean, you know, there's like that's 16 shows coming. Yeah. There's 16 shows coming out like over the next three years, and that's I don't even think a full slate. I mean, what is what does everybody want to see? What, what is everybody excited for? I mean, you know, we got you know Hayden Christensen back and you you know McGregor. I mean, there's a lot to be excited for and obviously appreciative of so yeah what's everybody out there thinking about you know i'm i'm really excited about the accolade series it's not something that's coming out now but uh that's more sith lore maybe uh we'll get to see some people that you know i've read in some some novels and some legend stuff so um that'll be interesting but also you know the andor stuff i mean there's there's so much so i think that'd be a good question for her to post to everybody is what what are you guys excited for because there is so much out there Ahsoka. Which means more content, right? More Ahsoka. content. So that's good more, more content. That's I can't wait we want. to see Ahsoka. Num, 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 num. <laughs> <laughs> how, how wouldest thou shut thine mouth and offerest thine money toward Disney? How wouldest <clears throat> We still need that photo of you with the money up. Remember that. We need the money photo. That, we have to get that like in the air, like a wow. photo. Still of that. Well, look, we're going to do... I mean, eventually we'll do one of those... You know, we're a podcast, so eventually we'll have a caricature you know, logo that'll have, you know, DP will have his hat, you know, you'll have your Sith 
I'm just assuming we'll draw you in Sith regalia, Trent, and uh, and <laughs> Ken, Ken will have his mask, and I'll be doing this with the money, and that's how it'll be. And somebody maybe eventually will draw it or commission it, but that's that's my guess is what it'll look like. You can have and, and T Mitch, you can have. I'm gonna give you full red double bladed lightsaber, and you get to have lightning coming out of your fingertips. That is my gift to you. Come on, now it's it's Revan. It has to be one red and one purple. That's my favorite character. That's my favorite character of all time, by the way. I guess uh, Revan. You. You're welcome to it. Oh yeah. All right. Good and evil. But yeah, once again, guys, I, I thank everybody for uh, tuning in this week. Uh, once again, we, we we do take the time to uh, to give you guys a good content, and we, like Hit said, uh, don't like to beg or really ask, but we're kind of saying please give us five stars and, and give us a good rating as it, it helps us out. It helps the community out more than us, really. It's not really about us. It's about the community. And there's a lot of things we have planned that we want to do. But uh, with some of these platforms, um, there are certain things in place that, uh, you know, hurdles we have to cross and things we have to get checked in in order to do the things we want to do for everybody. So if you guys can please keep interacting in the message boards, um, you know, resharing, retweeting, you know, sharing these, these live these live casts even if you don't even care for us much you want us for five minutes even if you just put on your page hey just keep sharing please everybody give a share in and uh yeah, you know yeah. keep growing this community <laughs> you don't have to actually like us <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't even think i like me so we're, you know, we are explicitly okay. not asking you to like us we know that's too much we, we're yeah, not trying we don't, to yeah, exactly. we don't want to be liked by anybody just hit the button <laughs> just hit the button just hit the button, yeah, hit the button. Who cares? <laughs> the button and then just move forward just treat it like it's the ring right you don't want to be the last person that saw it it's just not a good idea yeah that would be bad yeah that would not be good your family won't talk to you anymore so So, uh next next week guys we're going to tackle uh part three which will be what you guys want to do you want to try to up it a little bit um there's how many left we're at 12 so season one has a total of um 22 so we can go that's only 10 we can do 10 10 yeah let's 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 i mean everybody could knock out 10 episodes in a week yeah Yeah, we can finish it yeah yeah we'll finish it out so all right guys we'll finish season one here so the last uh 10 episodes so 13 to 22 uh will be where we'll pick up um next week here so maybe give us a couple more minutes to discuss things and um we'll, we'll check out this format maybe these 10 episodes might speed it up and and be able to cover a couple uh so a couple more contact or excuse me a couple more um discussion points um in more detail so uh awesome. like i said is everybody we appreciate uh your time listening and viewing and um until the next week this is the way this is the way this is the way Cyclopedia.